but it might be for one of its closest competitors, the Volvo 460. Now, this car, a product of Volvo's Dutch operation, began life as the 480 Coupe. Then it was rebodied to become the 440 Hatch, and now there's this, the 460, which, like the Rover, is chasing the luxury end of the medium car sector. However, unlike Rover, who don't seem too bothered if people know the 400 and 200 are blood brothers, Volvo are keen to differentiate this from the cheaper 440 hatchback. To that end, it gets a very big Volvo-ish chrome grille on the front and a raised rear roofline for better headroom in the back. The floor pan's longer too. The net effect is that it does feel like an all-new car, a sort of cross between the hatch and the bargematic 700. That's exactly what Volvo wanted. The boot is huge, far bigger than you get when the rear seats are up in the five-door. And so that it doesn't lose too many practicality points over the hatch, and where it scores over the Rover in the process, the rear seats fold. Even cleverer, this is not something that can be done from inside the car, and that's a good security point. Now, the rules which apply in the medium sector are meaningless in the so-called executive league. It's harder to say that 40% of people prefer this and 70% of people prefer that. There's no universal agreement. So Ford have decided not to charge a premium at all. This new four-door therefore costs exactly the same as the established five-door. One thing is certain, though. Demand for big saloons is on the increase at the expense of big hatchbacks. And if the Granada was to carry on as Britain's best-selling executive car, it needed to diversify. The result is this. Extensive wind tunnel testing has resulted in this high boot line, but it doesn't give as big a boot as you might imagine. Sure, it's bigger than you get in a uh, hatchback, but there's actually two cubic feet more in a Vauxhall Senator. There are one or two good points, though. You can't lower the seat backrests from within the car if these little catches are up. And it's possible to isolate this boot lock from the central locking system. If you get something nicked from in here, it really isn't your lucky day. The boot actually creates a problem, though. Smaller drivers can't see the back of it from behind the wheel, and therefore parking is a trifle difficult. Frankly, that's the least of the Granada's problems. I know it's very roomy in here, and I know that in this top-of-the-range Scorpio model, it's very well equipped. We've got compact disc player, air conditioning, cruise control, electric seats, you name it. But the instrument panel looks like it's come from a Ford Fiesta, and frankly, the rest of it looks like it's come from a sort of 1970s music centre. There's even a bit of what looks like teak down there. To drive, it's about the same as the hatch, i.e. not all that brilliant. The handling, even with four-wheel drive, is pretty ho-hum, and the engines, especially this 2.9-litre V6, are really very nasty indeed. Ford don't often make mistakes with their marketing. If they say they need a four-door saloon more than a new interior or a new engine, then so be it. But they aren't averse to making the odd mistake with their styling, and here's another one. Rather looks like they've glued an aircraft carrier to the back of the existing hatchback. I don't think the transformation to the Volvo is particularly successful either. This is the turbo model, and it still looks really rather anonymous. Mind you, it can't be easy when a designer's given a hatchback and they say, look, just turn this into a saloon, will you? To prove that it can be done properly, you only need to look at this. It's a very elegant, very coherent design. It looks like it was meant to be this way in the first place. I think it's going to be a very great success.